Welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. This is going to be Saturday Night Special, episode 135. All right, so uh, to start off with, we got a couple things that I'm going to go over with you. Uh, a couple things that I want to talk about. The video content for this week, I got a couple things that's going, that's going in here. First of all, we've got another tool from our channel supporter, Edge Technology, and I show using this tool. It's this one right here. We got the tail stock alignment bar and I went over earlier in the week and we set it up on the Victor and I got some video of it putting it to use and showing how this tool actually works so we're going to throw that in this this episode of SNS I know I've had a lot of guys suggest that so I wanted to go ahead and get to this one and, and share it on the channel here and just a reminder too that uh, that edge technology is they are in fact a supporter of my channel here so they, uh, there's, some, there's some great people to do business with, and don't forget that I have a discount code to share with you there. It's called Ed Summer. If you want to go buy something from their website, uh, put in Ed Summer for the promo code, you'll get 10% off. I've also got some content on the belt sander. So we got, we got a new belt sander in the shop now, and I, I showed some footage of that, bringing it home and uncrating it and getting it set up over there. So we'll get to that real soon. Look for that. And there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention to you. Uh, first of all, Amazon. Amazon, uh, I share links in some of my videos whenever people are asking about certain products. Hey, where can I buy this? Where can I buy that? Such as Noga indicator holders, that deburring wheel that I showed that I use on the Miller's Falls grinder, books, any, anything that is on Amazon that you can get there. If it's in my video, I like to grab that link and put it in the description box and that that serves two purposes there and I'm just I'm just trying to throw this out there so you guys are aware of it all right one it provides an easy click for you guys to go to if you're interested in something the other thing is that when I share those links from Amazon is that that's another way that I'm trying to earn a little bit of revenue for the shop whenever you're part of Amazon Associates whenever you share the links you you earn revenue off the sales so that that's how that works there and you know if you're if you're not interested in buying through that link then you know by all means don't but I'm just letting all you guys know that is another way that uh, to support the channel around here whenever I share those Amazon links all right so I've been wanting to mention that for weeks now and I just keep forgetting to uh, talk to you guys about that so another thing that has come up here in the uh, last couple months really is that sometimes you hear a little bit of noise in the audio a little bit of a staticky sound and I've, I've been noticing it too and it's come across on my computer whenever I'm playing the actual raw video clips I have not figured out what's causing that yet I don't know if it's the computer the camera or the mic so I want to start trying to track that down I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and replace the mic on the camera here I've got that Rode I believe it's called the Rode Video Mic. It's a shotgun mic. And, you know, that was given to me by a viewer a while back. We've been using that for a couple years now. I've also, also got this USB adapter cord. And I'm going to go ahead and replace those and see if that helps with the audio. The camera is still basically a new camera. You know, we've had it for a few months now. So I hope it's not the, the new camera. If it's not all that, I don't know if it's... Uh, in the computer itself or what I know my computer needs a needs a tune-up done and some upgrades it's it's going on a few years old and hasn't been touched so all right I, that's that's about all I wanted to mention oh one other thing I did want to say though is if you haven't been checking out any of the shop talk videos what I've been doing in those is those videos is trying to answer questions that people leave in comments you know they asking me about tools machines things around the shop here that I don't really necessarily get to throw in other videos or an SNS video. So I'm trying to take those comments and questions and throw them into a video called Shop Talk. And I've got plenty of topics here that, that I'd like to go over here in, in future episodes. I've had a lot of requests for measuring tools, telescope gauges, and carbide inserts. That's probably some of the biggest hits right there, but there's always plenty of suggestions on other things to do. So um, just a it's a fun video for me because I try to I try to do 
no editing really you know i just throw the videos together transitions nice and smooth and then and upload it so it's a it's a little time saver for me not to have to do all that editing on that video so i do have one viewer mail gift that came in this week and i'd like to pull that down here and show it to you and after that we'll go ahead and get to our content for the week okay so this week we've got a very interesting viewer gift that has come in there's actually a few things right here and this all come in from Steve Coe, and he is from Baytown, Texas, longtime viewer of the, of the channel and a, a supporter of the channel here. So he wrote me, wrote me a nice letter. I wanted to read you a couple things out of this, and we'll show what, what Steve had sent in. Uh, one of the comments that he made was, uh, he said, I don't know where you find the time to make them, but I'm glad that you do, talking about the videos. You know, that's just uh, that one thing I'll go ahead and mention, kind of off topic there is I spend a lot of my time out here in the shop whenever I'm not at work. And that's really all I do. You know, I go out and I socialize occasionally with my family and stuff, but whenever I get off work, I come home and what's, what's on my mind is always uh, either, either jobs, projects, or machine work in the shop, and videos. You know, it's something that I enjoy to do. So I dedicate usually several days out of the week to do work and then make videos out of that content. So it's just something that I enjoy to do and I'm fortunate that I can do that. You know, I don't have a family, I don't have a wife and kids and it's just me, me and Stella. So I guess I get to do that kind of stuff, go home and play. So anyway, we'll get back to Steve's letter here. Uh, he gives me some info about, you know, his own experience and everything. And uh, he goes, having watched a number of your videos, I decided I wanted to find something neat to send you that would, that would showcase your chosen profession. I came up with a few things that I am close that I hope you will enjoy. There are items that date back even before I was born that I think would go nicely in your curio cabinet or on the wall. So what he has sent, he sent a few things here. This is one, he sent a nice old Starrett slide rule. That's very, very neat there. I do not think I have one like this here. I think I have an old Stanley that's wood and brass. So thank you for that, Steve. Old stair slide rule. So what he's got here is some really cool, like what I would consider wall art. And I really like this stuff, by the way. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm trying to find to put on my walls in there. So we've got a few little uh, sort of like advertisements. This one's called the Bench Machinist, a three-in-one machine. And then there's a, there's a car there on the back, a Benham 6. All right, here's another one, a little bit bigger, that shows off some of the brown and sharp cutters from back in the day. And this was for, let me see, uh, Machinery Ad by Hammaker, Schlemmer and Company featuring Brown and Sharp milling cutters. So that's that's an old one right there. All right, there's one more on the back. <laughs> Wheeler F Reflector Company for uh, lights and uh, that kind of stuff. All right. So here's another really neat one. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys would like this. So I believe this was out of, yeah, Popular Mechanics out of the advertising section. And it's showing off the new model 16 inch South Bend lathe for $598, brand new. And, oh, he does have the dates on there. So this one right here is from 1931. So South Bend cost basically $600 in 1931. All right, and here is the uh, cream of the crop right here out of the, out of the bunch. And this is an advertisement for Kearney and Trekker showing off one of their big milling machines right here. And then that just, that is, that is a great picture right there. And this one is from 1942 during the World War II effort. It's even in the uh, advertisement here for the, uh, their line of Milwaukee machine tools. Very nice. This is, so all this stuff come from a company called Period Paper. And this is a certificate of authenticity. And they also had another letter here uh, from period paper. So this is where 
Steve must have got these pictures from. So I'm definitely going to frame this stuff up and put it on the wall, Steve, and this will look great in there in the, in the room with all the other stuff. So really, really neat. Uh, you did a great job, and these, all these old advertisements were really nice. So thank you very much, Steve. Very cool stuff, man. So we got a new tool in the shop from Edge Technology. And what this is, is your tailstock alignment bar. And it's the model number 27-000. So we're gonna go ahead and test this thing out. We'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll go over to the Victor lathe and we will set it up and indicate it and see if our tailstock is out of alignment. So just pulling out of the package here. So these are precision ground on centers after it's put together. They set it up between centers there and they grind it to the same exact size on each end. So it looks to be a pretty nice product there. And as with all of the products from Edge, they send you a very nice little instruction booklet or an instruction manual that comes with their tool. It comes with color pictures there and step-by-step -step instructions on the proper way to, to use it. So we'll go ahead and go over to the Victor. I am going to use dead centers on this, so we'll talk about that just a little bit. And we're going to use a centering sleeve up inside of the spindle that holds the, the dead center, and I'll talk about that too. So let's move over there to the Victor. So I've removed the chuck, and this is your spindle board, and this is machined on your taper here. So first thing you want to do is just make sure that it's really good and clean, which I've already done this. I've already cleaned it out, cleaned it out really well. And just I like to check it with my fingers, make sure I didn't miss any dust there. Try to get it as clean as you can so that it doesn't throw the centers off. And your lathe should be equipped with this right here. This is a, you know, a reducer sleeve, Morse taper to Morse taper. And Dad always seemed to call it a half bushing, you know, but you call it what you will. So make sure that this is cleaned as well. I've already buffed the outside of it with some Scotch-Brite and make sure there was no contamination on there to throw off the uh, reading, same way on the inside. I'm just gonna stick it in there lightly. I'm gonna give it just a little tap. Make sure it's seated. And as far as the centers go, I picked out a couple of my good dead centers. I like this one because it's carbide tipped. And these have not seen very much use at all just from sitting around and getting handled. But I went ahead and cleaned these off too. I hit them with some Scotch-Brite by hand. So we'll go ahead and uh, first thing I want to do is we're going to put a test indicator on here. We're going to see what kind of run out we might be getting with this. All right, we got my little interrapid indicator set up. These are real touchy. All right, not too bad. So it looks like we've got maybe a half a thousandths. Each line is a half a thou on that one right there. So we've got about a half a thousandths run out. Go ahead and move this out of the way. And go ahead and install our dead center. So we'll make sure that our, our tailstock bore is cleaned out as well. I've already gone in here with my rag and just kind of wiped it out. So it should be good and clean, hopefully. And repeat with the dead center here as well. Make sure it's good and clean. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our bar in there. I made sure that the centers were clean. There was no dust or anything on them. Run this tailstock up. Give it just a little bit of pressure and lock it. And we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get an indicator set up. And what we'll do is we'll check it from end to end here and see what kind of difference we get. And what we're measuring for is this tailstock being off one way or the other in alignment with your spindle there. All right, to do this, you just use any mag base indicator you want or any kind of fixed indicator on your tool post. I would say a uh, rigid mounted indicator would probably be even better. But we're going to use the Noga and I'm going to use this Starrett number 25-131 indicator. This is one that belonged to my granddad that I had Starrett rebuilt for me. I believe it was last year that I had this one. And uh, it's, it's new. I, I actually think they just sent me a new indicator and just left the, uh, the original bottom mounting plate on it. I had showed it, my granddad had his initials in the bottom of it right there. And I told him to make sure do not <laughs> remove this or, you know, not put it with the uh, repair. So anyway, I think I got a new indicator. Let me get this snaked around. I got it all the way up here and I, I made sure I got plenty of travel here in between, you know, the, the distance. So we'll get this set up here. Try to get everything nice and center and level. All right, and I'll bring the camera around here and show you how we do this. So using the cross slide, we're going to go ahead and run this in. And we'll probably just go to our 6 o'clock position, which is 25 thousandths. Just kind of giving it a little wiggle to see if we get any movement just from the, the uh, carriage lifting as we move it. All right, so 25, we'll go ahead and come off that real easy and run our distance here. And we'll just ramp up real slow to this one. Okay. We'll just move it back and then keep it there. So, all right, looks like we've got right at two thousandths let's go ahead and check it again we'll run it back down here and, and see where we're at again yeah we moved a little bit so we we gained a, a half a thousandths on that movement there Go back down here and check it again. All right, so we moved the total of four lines, so that's two thousandths that were off. And this tailstock, so it's going to be, it's reading negative on this end, so the tailstock needs to come that direction. We need to come that direction one thousandths to make up the two thousandths difference right here so i'll go ahead and grab my wrenches and we'll see if we can uh, make this happen so typically what you have on on your tailstock to adjust this in case you've never done this before you have a bolt here on each side and in this case it's a six millimeter allen head so you have to adjust it you you basically what you're doing is you're going to loosen one side, you're going to tighten the other. Okay, and I can never remember which way is which, so I have to just watch the indicator as I start moving this, this screw to see which way I'm moving. And if I go the wrong way, then I just go the opposite direction. So I'm going to set you back around here on the indicator, and, and this is what I'll be moving, this one and this one. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can tighten this one and pull it over to us slightly. 
and it usually doesn't take much. Not wanting to move, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the back side of it and see what happens. There we go. Nope, looks like I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I thought we had it. All right, there we go. All right, that was about a thousand. So let's go ahead and check it and see if it's uh, jiving. So it looks to me like we're still showing two thousandths, but it's best to uh, just sneak up on it, even though you know you want to take half of it, you know, you just start with a little bit and you keep working your way to it. So that was reading 24 thousandths. Twenty-four, so let's go ahead and not quite two thousandths. Let's go ahead and move it just a little bit more. Probably went too far on that one there. No, we're sneaking up on it still. Just past the 24 line. It ain't much. Let me see if I can tweak it just a little bit more. All right, it's just past the 24. All right, so that's putting us that looks like that's putting us less than a half a thousandths off right there. Not bad. So better than what we had when we started there. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as it is and call that good but the one thing that you have to keep in mind on older machines now this is an older machine you know this is a our early 80s i believe late 70s or early early 80s you have wear in the in the ways and you also have wear on the bottom of your tailstock here so a lot of your older lays you'll find that they start they start sinking further down than the center line of your headstock and you have to take that consideration on older machines that's what's up with the the monarch the tailstock is a little bit low because it's got some wear underneath there but you you learn your machines you know and a machinist learns the machines and you learn to work around that whenever you're doing your machining so that was a demonstration of your tailstock alignment bar from edge technology very nice tool jump on the website i've got a discount code there if you would like to purchase this or anything else on the website it's called ed summer just put that promo code in there and you get yourself 10 percent off just one more quick note that i forgot to mention about this is the center to center distance on these ends for the tailstock alignment bar is exactly 12 inches so it is possible that you could use this if you wanted to to offset your tailstock if you if you're wanting to cut a certain taper 
Say for instance, an example of that is three quarter to the foot. That's that's a standard prop shaft taper, and you could you could offset this to where whenever your your dial indicator moves that amount, in this case 0 0.750 from one end to the other, one end being zero, and then you get a movement of 0 0.750, you know that you're cutting three quarter to the foot taper. So that's just one of the features that's actually built into this alignment bar is being able to utilize it so that you can set up a taper. Whenever you want to do some facing or turning on a piece of thin wall tube like, like I'm doing here, I'm just facing the ends to get it square, you know, you'll run into chatter issues and ringing issues. You just take some rubber hose and coil up in there. I got a couple pieces here, you know, I, I use for that purpose and it really helps a lot to dampen the vibrations. Here. 30 thousandths. That's a nice little trick. Any kind of rubber hose doesn't really matter. So it's new machine day for me. Today I got the new belt sander that my viewer Jack Inman, he had located for me and we negotiated on and he did a fantastic job of picking it up and building that crate for it to go in and send it down here. It showed, showed up on an RNL truck down, in, down at my work and then I brought it home. So I got my appliance dolly, I'm getting ready to strap it to it and uh, get it down and start getting uncrated. So. I'll show you what it looks like as we go along, okay? So I just about got it uncrated. All I got to do is just walk it off of the, the pallet down there. Jack did a fantastic job hand making this little crate. And he took the, the feet out of it, which here's the feet here that he put in a box. And actually used some bolts and had it bolted down there to the bottom. And then just made four, four panels out of some plywood and these little strips and just had them all screwed together and there was no damage on it whatsoever I noticed on one of them there was a little bit of scuff in there you know on, on a couple of the boards but it did its job so Jackie did a good job on the crating going through the extra effort to uh, get it here undamaged so alright I'm gonna go ahead and get it walked off there and try to get it inside the shop so I've already got this side of the shop over here kind of cleaned up a little bit remember I was talking uh, an episode or two back that I wanted to move that desk out so that's exactly what I did I've got it outside here and just use it out here so we'll, we'll end up using this corner over here for our sanding and grinding machines I'll bring you back shortly Alright guys, we got it in here and we got it hooked up and I think it, everything is good to go. And so far I'm pretty happy with it. So I did plug it in and turn it on to see if it run and it runs fine. And I'm happy with the, the performance of it. It spins up fast and it seems like it's got the right amount of power to it. We've got one identical at the work, it's a Jet brand, and the thing ain't never been right since the day we bought it. It just doesn't seem to have the, uh, the same power to it, and it bogs down whenever you try to sand something, but this one does pretty good. So that tag says, designed in USA, made in Taiwan. This is a Taiwan made machine. And I went ahead and uh, squared it up. What I do is I use my little stair machine to square, and I squared it up to the, you know, the surface that the belt goes on there, just like that. Got it pretty square, and snugged it up. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Like I said, it spins up fast. And Seems like it's doing just like it should.
I've got this piece right here that I, I usually have this in the uh, vise to, for the camera to sit on. Doing good. Yeah, it's got plenty of power there. Okay. Well, I think we're ready to roll. So I don't know if it'll, you know, stay in that one position right there. This one I went ahead and um, I put another belt on it and laid it down. This this bell sander does work good for certain things, man, like uh, exhaust manifolds and stuff like that. You can't beat it because you got this long area here that you can lay that thing on. But the the, the weakness in this is the uh, the stand. It really needs a more stable stand for this top to bolt down onto instead of that because it's really it's really light duty and it's and it tips really easy. So this may end up going outside under the cover though because I don't use it very much. And now that we got this nice Wilton. This is the one that I'll be going to, you know, regularly all the time. So we may free up some room and move this one around and go ahead and line up the rest of our grinders over here on this side, including the, uh, the bow door carbide grinder, and hopefully maybe make a uh, pedestal for our drill grinder to go over here too. So I just want to give another thanks to Jack Inman for, you know, going out of your way for helping me get this machine right here. I really appreciate it, Jack, and you did a great job on the crating. And, you know, Jack also sent me a nice detailed email with instructions on how to take the, the crate apart, you know, so I wasn't just, you know, shooting in the dark there, tearing it up. But, um, yeah, thank you very much, Jack, and this is gonna be a great addition to the shop, and I'm sure you're gonna be able to see it used around here on future projects.